Today we'll talk about deadlock. How deadlock is introduced and how should we avoid deadlock. Let's start with the example that we had last time. I have a class log file and log file has a mutex and a OF stream and the shared print will print will lock the mutex and then print things to the OF stream. Function 1 counts from 0 to negative 100 and the main function creates a thread of t1 with function 1 and then counts from 0 to 100. For demonstration purpose, let's use cout instead of uh, f. And now if I run the program, as you see, both threads are printing things to the standard out in a synchronized manner. Now let's say I want to protect my resource with two mutexes. And mu2. Um, for example, the first one is for security reason and the second one is for file system reason or whatever. And uh, to protect my resource, I need two lockers. The second one is for mutex2 and it's called locker2. And I also need two shared prints. Shared print 2 will lock mutex2 first and then lock mutex1. And function 1 will call the original shared print and the main thread will call the shared print 2. And now if I run the program again, As you see, the program didn't finish. It stopped in the middle and hang on there. What has happened is a classic deadlock situation. The T1 thread locks the mutex MU, and before T1 go ahead and lock MU2, the main thread locks the mutex MU2. So the T1 is waiting for the main thread to release MU2 and the main thread is waiting for T1 to release MU. It's a deadlock. To avoid deadlock, there's one thing that you can do is make sure everybody is locking the mutexes in the same order. So in the print 2, instead of locking MU2 first and then MU, I'll do it in the same order as in print. And now if I run the program again, the program finished without a deadlock. C++ standard library actually provides a better solution. It's called a standard lock function, which can be used to lock arbitrary number of lockable objects such as mutex using certain deadlock avoidance algorithm. So I can lock MU and MU2. And when I create the locker, I need another parameter. It's called standard adopt lock. What this parameter does is it tells the locker that the mutex is already locked and all you need to do is to adopt to the ownership of that mutex so that when you go out of scope, remember to unlock the mutex. And if I run the program again, then the program also finished without any deadlock. Now let's analyze what are the things that you can do to avoid deadlock. First of all, you need to evaluate the situation. Do you really need to lock two or more mutexes at the same time? Sometimes you don't. And if that is the case, you need to use one mutex at a time. I can lock the mutex MU 
and then do a bunch of different things and then I lock the mutex mu2 and do the other things. So that's the first thing to avoid mute, uh, deadlock. Prefer locking single mutex at a time. Second thing is try not to lock the mutex and then call some user function. Because then you will never know what the user provided function will do. It might end up locking another mutex and so and then you have two mutex being locked. Or it might even try to lock this same mutex again. So the second thing is avoid locking a mutex and then calling a user provided function. Thirdly, if you really want to lock more than two mutex at a time, then try to use the standard lock function to lock them. Because the standard lock function provides some deadlock avoidance algorithm to lock the mutex. And sometimes using the standard lock function is not possible, then you can try to lock the mutex in same order for all threads. Or you can provide a hierarchy of mutex so that when a thread is holding a lower level mutex, it is not allowed to lock a higher level mutex. So that is a generalized idea of locking the mutex in the same order. Generally speaking, the locking of your resource should happen at an appropriate granularity. A fine-grained lock protects a small amount of data. A coarse-grained lock protects a big amount of data. If your locks are too fine-grained, then your programming becomes tricky and you are more exposed to deadlocks. If your locks are too coarse-grained, then you are losing big opportunity of parallel computing because many threads will spend a lot of time waiting for the resources. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. Bye-bye.